Antonio, the Hit Baxter. Mate, we're here to talk about Super Saturday, but before we get into that, how's your day been? What have you been up to? Talk us through your day. Mm, today, mm, it was hot. It was uh, slow. Um, training, captain's run before tomorrow was good. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty good. Well, we did speak a little bit off air and we said that you're more looking forward to, I guess, Sunday football with your team playing on Sunday. But let's jump into the Saturday games. It is the first of only two games on Super Saturday. You've got the Parramatta Eels taking on the Bulldogs. It's 5.30 from Parramatta's home ground in Parramatta at Combank Stadium. Baxter, I'm going to throw it to you. I feel like... It is a good eel squad, but I'm going to throw it over to you to talk about this one. So talk to me about the lineup. Yeah, you got that man that lives on the northern beaches and drives seventy dollars a, a day to get to Parramatta. That's Clint Gufferson, Bailey Simonson, Will Panasini, Morgan Harper moves from Manly over to the Eels. My man Sean Russell, Dylan Brown makes his hundredth appearance for the Eels this weekend. Mitch Moses, RCG, Joey Lussick, Junior Paulo, Sean Lane. Bryce Cartwright, the man we all love, uh, Jamal Hopgod, um, Brendan Hands, Ryan Madison, Joe Offengawi, uh, Klima Talugi, and um, the uh, the reserves of uh, Ogan, Asi, Morata, Morality, Makora, and Talagi um, to round out the uh, rest of the reserves. But uh, yeah, strong lineup on paper. Um, I don't know how they went really in the um, preseason challenge, um, so to speak. So I can't really speak on that behalf. But from all all things that I've been reported on from inside the Paramount HQ is uh, everything looks uh, uh, ready to go for round one and they're hoping to get the two points off this. Um, well, I will say there are there – are, there are teams in this. Uh, there are teams in this uh, league that have salary cap sombreros, and there's others that have other hats. And this is just the Bulldogs who have the uh, salary cap um, sombrero, uh, not sombrero, uh, fedora hat. So um, um, let's see how they go with their new fedoras. All I know is uh, Feel Good does look very, very good in that hat. No, he doesn't. No, <laughs> we are talking about the Parramatta at the moment, so obviously I will throw it. I guess back to you. Obviously, it is one of your good mates, Sean Russell. He has secured that starter position in week one. I guess, have you spoken too much? What's the talk around camp? Are they firing? I know you haven't watched much of preseason, but is there much to take away from it? Has he won, obviously, that position moving forward? Will he replace Will Penasini when Sivo comes back? Is there any word around that? Nah, um, look, I think it's more, I think he's got that wing spot locked down and on the uh, left-hand side there. So hopefully when um, Sivo comes back, maybe it's a Simonson, Will Penasini as a centre. As it's really, it's up to those three blokes who's going to get the starting role, uh, starting two roles for the um, centre position, but from all reports from him, just talking to him off screen and off the training paddock is um, everybody's yipping and yarn, ready to bounce around. They've they've seen Vegas. They're, they're happy to get the nod for next year because that's very, very soon. Um, those teams being announced and, um, yeah, they, they seem like really they're ready to go. They reckon... Last season was last season. You know, it is what it is. You, there was nothing that they could do in that grand final. But um, oh, two years ago, so, sorry. Um, but they reckon they that this is their chance to go again. Well, I mean, I mean, a lot of people, me included, we say a lot of the time that Parramatta are the team that player for player kind of match Penrith, and it shows every time they do come up against them. It's a tight contest. And really, in the last couple of years, they're the only team that can really get that rub of the green when they play against the Panthers, minus the grand final, like you spoke about, Penrith were way too red hot. They won the game, it mattered. But again, a lot of these players are going to be better off for it, but they are moving into, I guess, that time of this, is there a premiership window? And it's funny when you talk about premiership windows in Parramatta because it's been so long, but when you've got your captain, Clint Gufferson, going, I'm happy to move. 
Bruin an X factor, I think it's starting to show that these players are starting to realise that if they don't win a premiership in the next couple of years, it's not happening. So watch this space. Will they bring in an X factor in the next couple of years? Time will tell, but I think it needs to be done sooner rather than later. But let's turn our attention to the um, Canterbury Penrith Bulldogs. Um, they've got Blake Tuff at fullback. You've got Blake Wilson and Josh Adekar in the wins with the centres of Jacob Karaz and the man himself and the captain, Stephen Crichton. I'll come back to you on that in a second. Five, eight and half back. You've got Matt Burden and Drew Hutchinson has beat Toby Sexton to that number seven jersey. In the forwards, you've got the props of Max Kinn and Pawasa Famasuli. You've got the second row of Viliami Kikiao coming back after an injury ridden season with Jacob Preston. And then you've got Reid Mahoney as hooker and Jamin Salmon locking the pack for the scrum. You then have an interchange bench of Kurt Mann, Samuel Hughes, Josh Curran, and Kurt Morris with an extended bench of a man that had a lot of excitement when we saw his glow up. He spent his time out of the game. You've got Bronson Cherry returning as the 18th, 19th man, whatever you want to call it. You've then got Toby Sexton, as we discussed, Jake Turpin, Connor Tracy, and Kikioni Katoga. So a lot of utilities on that bench, to say the least. But let's, before we even jump into this team, before we talk about, obviously, where we think both teams are going to finish, who we think is going to win, let me just scroll back to that man that is making his, I guess you could say, professional debut for the Bulldogs. He's being given the captain's arm, Ben. What do you make of that? Um, it is a, it's a bit of a weird one because they say you've got to be a dog to get it. Uh, to, uh, you've got to, to be a dog, you've got to uh, know how the dogs, uh, what the inner sanctum works and, for a guy who's only been there since November one, um, you know, gets captain. Everything, everything was a bit weird. You know, last year they had the what the two captains in Matt Burton and Reed Mahoney, um, Reed Marnie. Um, again, I don't, I don't agree with two captains, but it's the way they went. It's not this season. Um, I guess combining everybody together, he's probably got. The most current um, of Premiership rings on his hand, maybe the most beating uh, Josh Adekar. Um, so it is what it is. Maybe yeah, maybe it's just that. And um, yeah, I mean there was a lot of speculation. Obviously, when he did come in, um, taken away from the captaincy. Obviously, the coach knows him. The coach knows what he can do. But there's a lot of speculation that he was moving to the Bulldogs to play in that fullback position. As it stands at the moment, it looks like Blake Taff has won that battle. It looks like this is how they will round out in round one. I guess, what do you make of that? Blake Taff at fullback, Stephen Crichton. Is it is it more so Serrata going, come on, man, I need you. We've had a bad season. Or is it just Blake Taff was the better fullback come preseason? Um, yeah, I think Blake Taff maybe beat him, beat him out. Um to be the starting fullback role. Uh, again, I didn't watch any really much preseason uh, games, um, but I, from what I have seen, um, uh, the the big concern, uh, the big, sorry, not concern, but the big shock being Tobin Sexton not being the starting seven. Um, Drew Hutchinson, um, I think he was just a little bit more solid and um, sort of cemented his real spot at seven in the preseason. I think it was, it was against uh, Cronulla and um, came away with the chocolates, I think, that day. Oh, excuse me. Um, I think he just looked a little bit more. He, he, him at seven looked, made the team look a little bit more solid and um, really um, cemented as a as a, unity, a unit team. So, but... Um, then again, I'm really looking to, uh, forward to round 11. Um, I think that's magic round up at Suncorp Stadium uh, when the Dogs do take on uh, Rick, uh, uh, the Canberra Raiders in Ricky Stewart. And um, maybe there's a – now Now instead of being called, um, Ricky can just confirm that he plays for the Dogs and doesn't have to refer to him as a weak gutter dog. So um, may, maybe that's just um, – Proof is in the pudding. Um, Ricky was just seeing me being a fortune teller there, but 
that's just my little. Well, if there, if there is anyone that is watching, and has no idea what Baxter re- referencing. Just look up Ricky Stewart's comment on Jamin Salmon, and you'll get all you need to know. But we won't go too much into that. Baxter, before we do move into predictions, talk to me. Obviously, let's start with Parramatta. Where do they finish? Why? And then obviously the Bulldogs. Where do you think they finish on the ladder? Give it a free four uh, position radius. I think I think Bulldogs miss out on the eight. I think they come like about tenth. Around that mark, um, not too close to the to the eight, um, maybe six points difference. It's just going to be without reach there. Um, Eels, I see them being a bottom top eight um, in that five to eight position. Um, I think they can do a job to big teams this year, um, especially Pembroke. Maybe they get the double over them again, like they did last season. So uh, yeah, that's where I put them and. Uh, for my tips this week, I've got Eels, uh, 13 plus. 13 plus, wow. You did say in the previous episode you were sticking close to 1 to 12 this week, but I will uh, side with I, you. I've only got, that's, that's two, two 13 pluses so far. Come on. I, I, I will side on you with the Parramatta side winning. I'm going to go 1 to 12. I think they're. I'm not going to go out there and say the dog's going to make the eight. Um, a lot of people made that mistake after the first year. They got all the kick outs and burdens and all that in, and they thought they were going to come superstar. So I'm going to go with the Eels 1-12. to 12. My final question to you is you have the Bulldogs missing the eight. If they were to narrowly miss it, I think he's safe. But if they were to miss this by a fair few points, is Serato's job on the line or do you think he's safe for another year? No, nah, he, he, his job is secure no matter what they do um, really this season. I, I I think they have to like lose every single game. He has to lose the confidence of the, the changing room for him to be sacked. Um, this can't be another Anthony Seagold. Um, when he was at Brisbane, get signed on a big – Big deal uh, for a long term, five years, and then gets paid out after one and a half years. Um, it can't happen if you want a sort of a rebuild, um, sort of say, um, going forward, you have to stick to the plan. Okay, after five years or whenever Serraldo has been signed for, if it's not worked, okay, well, then you know he, he's um, he sort of laid a brick towards the the foundation of where they need to be like he's brought in he's brought in the fox he's brought in kick uh cr- critter now he's brought in kick out he's brought in salmon he's brought in sexton um you know he's brought in blake taff he's brought in uh who's on the bench uh Cher- uh cherry the man that's been out of the game for so long um he's got uh you know uh, other other black uh, other blokes on the on the reserves as well that he's brought in um yeah, that if if it doesn't work out, he's probably laid one or two bricks in this foundation for the dogs to be back to where they were. Yeah, I mean, I got to agree. Uh, I think his job might be safe. The only thing I guess that could get him fired is if, let's say, they're sitting wooden spoons of any one or two wins come the end of the season. I think he could be in trouble. But anything anything above, I want to say, fourteen, he's probably doing a good job and he's enough to survive. But. And welcome back to the Gone for Ten show. It's your host, it's Antonio, it's Backstar. Mate, we're here to talk about Super Saturday, but before we get into that, how's your day been? What have you been up to? Talk us through your day. Mm, today, mm, it was hot. It was uh, slow. Um, training, captain's run before tomorrow was good. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty good. Well, we did speak a little bit off air and we said that you're more looking forward to, I guess, Sunday football with your team playing on Sunday. But let's jump into the Saturday games. It is the first of only two games on Super Saturday. You've got the Parramatta Eels taking on the Bulldogs. It's 5.30 from Parramatta's home ground in Parramatta. 